Chapter 17 of The Steam Man of the Prairies by Edward S. Ellis. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Steam Man of the Prairies. Chapter 17 Homeward Bound. The punishment administered to the Indians who had so greatly annoyed the miners proved a very beneficial one. Nothing more was seen of them except one or two glimpses of the redskin upon his black horse. He, however, maintained a respectful distance, and at the end of a day or two disappeared altogether. These were golden moments indeed to the miners, and they improved them to the utmost. From earliest light until the darkness of night they toiled almost unceasingly. Half the time they went hungry rather than stopped their work to procure that which was so much needed. When, however, the wants of nature could no longer be trifled with, Baldy took his rifle and started off on a hunt, which was sure to be brief and successful. Sometimes he caught sight of some game in the gulch, and sometimes something in the air drew the fire of his unerring rifle. And the miners feasted and worked as only such violently laboring men can do. Although the boy was unable to assist at the severe labor, yet he soon demonstrated his genius and usefulness. He not only constructed a dam, but made a rocker or machine of an original style that did the work far more expeditiously and thoroughly than it had yet been done. While the men were getting the auriferous sand, he separated it from the particles of dirt and gravel without any assistance from them, and without any severe labor for himself. There was some apprehension upon the part of all that the huge trapper, whom young Brainerd had met at night, would make his appearance. Should he do so, it would be certain to precipitate a difficulty of the worst kind, as he was morose, sullen, treacherous, envious, and reckless of danger. Baldy Bicknell really feared him more than he did the Indians, and the constant watchfulness he exercised for several days showed how great was his apprehension. Fortunately indeed for all concerned, the giant hunter continued his travels in a different direction, and the miners were undisturbed by him. Two weeks passed, by the end of which time the ravine was about exhausted of its precious stuff, and the miners made their preparations for going home. It was impossible to do anything more than conjecture the amount of wealth they had obtained, but Baldy was sure that there was enough when sold to buy each of them a handsome farm. "'Jerusalem! But now ain't that good!' exclaimed the delighted Ethan Hopkins as he mopped off his perspiring forehead. "'That air encourages me to take a step that I've often contemplated. "'What might the same be? "'Get married. "'Me and Serafinia Pike have been engaged for the last ten years, "'and now I'll be hanged if I don't go home and get spliced. "'And it's myself that'll do the same.' added Mickey, as he executed an Irish jig on the barren earth in front of their cavern home, after they had concluded to leave the place. "'Where does she reside?' inquired Ethan. "'Ballyduff, King's County, in the oim of the sea. It's there that lives the last that's to have the honour of becoming Mrs. McSquizzle, and becoming the mother of her own children. Ara, but isn't the same a beauty?' "'The same as my own, Michael.' ventured the Yankee, who deemed it his duty to correct this general remark of his friend. "'But ah, now, get cut with ye. She can't begin with Miss Bridget Molaffigbaugh, that resides with her mother and two pigs on the outskirts of Ballyduff, in the wee cabin that has the one room and the one windy. Wara, wara, now, isn't she a jewel?' "'And so is Serafinia. "'But has she the red hair that makes it unnecessary for them to have the candle lit at night?' And has she the same beautiful freckles, the size of a halfpenny, on the face and the nose, that has such an elegant turn up at the end that she used to hang her bonnet on it? Ah, uh, now, and did she have the sweet teeth, six of the same, that were so broad that they filled her whole mouth, and it was none of your gimlet holes that was her mouth, but a beautiful one, that, when she smiled, went round to her ears, did the same. And her shoes, but you ought to see them. Why so? What was the matter with her shoes? Nothing was the same. They was the shoes that the little pigs went to sleep in, afore they got so big that they couldn't get in them. 
and then it was her brother that used one of the same for a trunk when he emigrated to amenity. Ara now, but wasn't me own Bridget a jewel? Jehoshaphat, I should think she was, exclaimed Hopkins, who had listened in amazement to this enumeration of the beauties of the gentle Irish lass, who had won the affections of Mickey McSquizzle. No doubt she had a sweet disposition. Indeed she had, had she. It was that of an angel was the same. It was never that I stayed there a night courting the same that she didn't smash her shillelagh to smithereens over me head. Do yez observe that? asked Mickey, removing his hat and displaying a scar that extended halfway across his head. I don't see how anyone can help seeing that. Well, that was the parting salute of Bridget as I started for America. I don't know, but she did the same in style. That was her parting memento, was it? Yes, I gave her the black eye, and she did the same for me, and I never takes off me hat to scratch me head that I don't think of the sweet gal that I left at home. And thereupon the Irishman began whistling The Girl I Left Behind Me, accompanying it with a sort of waltzing dance kept with remarkably good time. And so you intend to marry her? inquired Hopkins with no little amazement. It's that I do, if I finds her heart fray when I return to Ballyduff. You know that the likes of her is sought by all the lads in Kings County, and to save breaking their hearts she may share the shanty of some of them. Jerusalem! But she is the all-firedest critter I ever heard tell on. What does she mean by that? demanded the Irishman, instantly flaring up. Does your man to insinuate that she isn't the most charming creature in the whole country? You'll allow me to accept my own Seraphinia? Never a once. Then I'll do it whether you like it or not. Your gal can't begin with mine, and never could. That I don't allow any man to say. And the Irishman immediately began divesting himself of his coat, preparatory to settling the difference in the characteristic Irish manner. Nothing loath, the Yankee put himself in attitude, determined to stand up for the rights of his fair one, no matter by whom assailed. Matters having progressed so far, there undoubtedly would have been a set-to between them, had not the trapper interfered. He and the boy were engaged in preparing the steam-man and wagon for starting, when the excited words drew their attention, and seeing that a fight was imminent, Baldy advanced to where they stood and said, not another word, or sculp me if I don't hammer both of you till there's nothing left of you. This was unequivocal language, and neither of the combatants misunderstood it. All belligerent manifestations ceased at once, and they turned to in assisting the preparations for moving. When all four were seated in the wagon, with their necessary baggage about them, it was found that there was comparatively little room for the wood. When they had stored all that they could well carry, it was found that there was hardly enough to last them twelve hours, so that there was considerable risk run from this single fact. The steam man, however, stepped off with as much ease as when drawing the wagon with a single occupant. The boy led on enough of steam to keep up a rattling pace, and to give the assurance that they were progressing homeward in the fastest manner possible. Toward the middle of the afternoon a storm suddenly came up and the rain poured in torrents. As the best they could do they took refuge in a grove, where, by stretching the canvas over themselves and the steam-man, they managed to keep free from the wet. The steam-man was not intended to travel during stormy weather, and so they allowed him to rest. End of chapter 17